Pop quiz. One of these pictures is real, and one of them is fake. Can you tell which one? Leave a comment if you think you know, and I will tell you the answer at the end of the video. Welcome back everybody, my name is Pat. I make AI videos on the internet and videos about how I make my AI videos. Today we're gonna go over how people such as myself take the likenesses of celebrities that have passed away and kind of bring them back to life with AI for our videos. I will explain to you how AI knows what particular celebrities look like and also how you can recreate this effect for yourself. But first, a big disclaimer. This should be used for like personal practice or parodies only. If you are actually trying to trick someone into thinking they are seeing a video of a real celebrity that is super unethical and borderline illegal. And it's a big reason why I'm making this video so that you can kind of get out ahead of it and learn what that sort of thing looks like so that you can outsmart those nefarious deceivers out there. First, I want you to imagine a turquoise apple. Just picture one in your head if you can. And you can kind of tell what that looks like. You've probably never seen a turquoise apple because I don't think they exist, but you certainly have seen the color turquoise and you have seen apples. And in your mind, you can mash the two together and create a picture for yourself, unless you've got aphantasia and then that's okay. But most people can do something like that. Computers traditionally could not. They were very, pardon the pun, binary. Things were yes or no, zeros or ones. But over the past few years, it has come to the attention of the world at large that computers can actually be used in a way that mimics the human brain, something called a neural network. So things are not only yes or no, computers now can also determine a maybe. So in the same way that you can imagine a turquoise apple, computers can now do the mathematical equivalent of imagining a similar thing. But how do they do that? Well, imagine you've got a shoebox. And inside the shoebox, you have labeled pictures of pretty much anything and everything, or at least most things. You know, in this box are a bunch of pictures of a guy who looks like, you know, that's James Dean. You can tell that's James Dean, right? You can tell I went to art school. Anyway, a bunch of pictures of James Dean, and they are all accurately labeled. The computer studies these pictures and turns them into information. Information it can use to fill in the gaps of something else later. So all of the images are studied, they are learned about, and then we don't need them anymore. And we can send the shoebox off to, uh, I guess the Supreme Court. So now the computer knows when you see this name, it remembers that it saw a lot of pictures with that name with a face that looked a lot like that. And it's gonna give us a, a close approximation of what it saw. And this is why you see celebrities featured pretty prominently in these AI videos. It's a lot easier to use the image of someone famous because the AI can more reliably generate an image of famous people. But what if we're trying to generate an AI image of someone who's not famous in the same way? Well, there's a little trick that you can do with Midjourney to make that happen, and I'm gonna show you how to do it for yourself. Get in my computer. Welcome everyone to Midjourney Alpha. Midjourney, for those of you that don't know, is one of many programs and services that exist that can look at the information the computer learned from looking at the pictures in the shoebox and create pictures based upon that information. And here we have some photos of someone who looks a lot like Audrey Hepburn holding an iPhone, something that is completely impossible to do. By the way, I know Panavision aspect ratio. I just don't do it because it doesn't look good on people's phones where most people watch my videos. Pretend they're cropped in. Okay, and you can see, by and large, that's all you kinda need to do to get an image of a celebrity. But you'll also notice there are a lot of instances where we get pictures of people that do not really look like Audrey Hepburn. They just share a lot of her similar features. And you can see it looks really good at a glance but the closer you get, the more things seem to fall apart. And this is how you can really tell that an image is AI generated. First, you used to be able to look at the hands and tell for sure. Nowadays, it's getting harder and harder to tell. The only real flaw that I can see is her thumb here is bent at kind of a weird angle. I'm a giant nerd, so I know that this is not an iPhone model that has ever existed. It's a combination of like old shapes and new features. It's, it's a weird looking iPhone. This cord thing in the back, why is it going up to a light, why is it going down in front of a seat here? And then the most obvious thing that I can see is look at her pupils. They're different sizes and they are slightly misshapen. There are lots of little things that AI just can't get right because in the same way it doesn't know who James Dean is, it doesn't know that this is 
a diner. It just has seen a lot of pictures, and mathematically, the blurry background had stuff that looks like this. It doesn't know what it's doing. So keep an eye out for stuff like that so you can stay ahead of the curve. So now let's say we want to do the same for Keanu Reeves. If you saw my Matrix video, I made a joke about how Keanu Reeves was immortal in order to have him as the main character. The real reason I did that was because the AI really knows what Keanu Reeves looks like. So we're going to do that. This is just off the top of my head. We're going to see what it looks like. We'll probably get something that's pretty close. And here you'll actually be able to see the AI generate the images. It starts with just random noise and then it uses the data that it has gathered to fill in the gaps in between the noise until it arrives at the image that you see. And you can see exactly what I was talking about. This guy, definitely not Keanu Reeves. This guy, definitely not Keanu Reeves. This guy, Keanu Reeves with bad plastic surgery. It also doesn't quite know what horn rimmed glasses are, apparently. This guy, I could buy it. I think his forehead might be too big, but overall, I think it's pretty close. But you still see some of those telltale signs. Look at the different sized irises. Look at the way the books are stacked on these back shelves. I don't know what kind of libraries you guys are going to, but my librarians keep their house in order, okay? We know that this is close. We know if we do this a few more times, we're probably gonna land on an extremely accurate likeness. And what we're gonna do now is we are going to put our prompt back up in here. We are gonna get rid of what our scene is of, but we are gonna go to the end here. We're gonna type in a special mid journey command. It is dash dash C R E F, which is a character reference. Now we're gonna go ahead and copy the image address and paste it in here. By the way, this works the same in mid journey alpha, which is the browser based version of mid journey that I'm using or their discord version, either or works. We're gonna paste in our image and it automatically now will use this generation of Keanu Reeves as a reference for images moving forward. But we no longer need to explicitly ask for Keanu Reeves. We can simply say in a public park at dusk, something like that. All right, uh, frankly, these are hilarious. He became a bench, that's wild. Wow. <laughs> and that's just an example of the AI has no idea what it's doing. It just knows I wanted a public park at dusk with this guy featured. It didn't know to only do him once. It didn't know that he wasn't romantically involved with his own disembodied head. It didn't know any of that. It's just math. And in this case, it got the math pretty wrong. But you can see we didn't need to explicitly call for Keanu Reeves. We were simply able to use a reference image and it was able to construct him based on that. And if we do this a bunch more times, we will probably get something that looks pretty good and will be usable for whatever we're trying to do. But now if you want to make an image of someone who isn't famous, well, guess what? You can do the same thing with an outside source. So here I'm just going to drop in a photograph of myself. Hello. And I'm going to tell you right now, it is not going to be as accurate, quote unquote, as this, but we should get something pretty interesting. Like looking in a mirror, pictures of not quite me, pictures of not quite Keanu Reeves. So if I were to do this a bunch more times, we would arrive at someone eventually who looked like me. And that is another quirk of this mid journey process. It is better at using its own generated images as a reference than it is at using outside images. And as we all know, this technology is relatively brand spanking new. So there is no reason for me to think that the way that I do things is better than any other way. So if you know an alternate method or if you know a better way than what I have shown here, let me know. And welcome back to the statistically 60% of you that skipped right ahead to the end of the video. Here's the answers to the pop quiz. The real image is this one. The generated image is this one. Did you get it right? Did you get it wrong? And if you got it right, let me know in the comments how you figured it out. I am very far from an expert in this topic. I'm just trying to make sure that everyone who wants to be up to speed with this technology is up to speed because it's super important. So let me know if you think I could have explained anything better or if I left anything out. And maybe that way we can all learn and improve together. Take it easy. Let me know if you got more questions and I'll catch you in the next one.